the savage beating and the subsequent death of 21-year-old Matthew Shepard in Wyoming last week outraged and saddened. I'd like to think it saddened all of us, but I have a terrible feeling that there were some who were not saddened. So when I received a phone call from Ellen DeGeneres, who is a friend, and she said, I'd like to come on the show to talk about this, I was very touched. And I was touched because this is a woman who herself has faced ridicule and harassment and has the courage to stand up for what she believes. And in this national conversation, hers is a voice that needs to be heard. Let me show you first a clip of Ellen as she spoke last night on the steps of the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. at a rally in support of legislation to ban hate crimes. I can't stop crying. <laughs> you know, I, I just, I, I mean, I know we all feel the same way, and I'm, I'm here, and I'm, you know, he's got these two close friends here, and I'm, I don't even know him, and I'm thinking this is just really selfish of me. I mean, what, pull yourself together, and, and it just hit me why I am so devastated by it. It's because this is what I was trying to stop. This is exactly why I did what I did. Please welcome Ellen DeGeneres. I want to talk about hate crime legislation and whether it can make a difference, but first I want to speak to you personally. I mentioned earlier when we were in the hot topics that I went to see Elton John last night. And in his concert, he said he's dedicating every one of his concerts this week in New York to Matthew Shepard. And then he paused and said, because it could have been me. Do you feel it could have been you? I felt like it was me. I, I can't tell you why this hit me so hard, because uh, I don't know if people, and I didn't pay attention to anything really dealing with gay issues, gay politics, uh, statistics, anything before I came out. And then I was sort of forced to because I received so many letters of kids saying they were going to kill themselves and they didn't because of me. And I started really paying attention. Um, there are, there are, this year alone, there are 2,500 hate crimes reported. And there are so many more that are unreported because either th the authorities don't do anything about it or most lesbians and gays are closeted so they don't want to report it. So who knows? But for some reason, he touched me. Have you received death threats? Mm-hmm. You have? Mm -hmm. So that you live in some kind of fear yourself? Oh, sure. Mm. I mean, there was a part of me that I think thought that was going to happen to me. When I first made the decision to come out, um, I was in therapy at the time, and I was dealing with, um, you know, issues of this, this could kill me. I actually could die because of doing this. And uh, for a long time, I lived with thinking I, I would be killed for it. And the fact that this happened to someone who was not an activist, who was just a sweet boy. A young kid. For no reason. You know, we had, to my horror, I was reading that there were still groups in Wyoming, and I'm sure other places, who say, I'm glad it happened. Maybe this will be a lesson. Legislation to ban hate crimes. There is a bill in Washington that has not passed. There are bills in other states, not in Wyoming. Can you legislate against hate? What would such a bill do? Well, first of all, I mean, every crime is, is some type of hate. And everyone's saying, uh, you know, everything's a hate crime. These two German tourists who, is, who were just killed in Santa Monica. But it was not the same kind of, when someone robs someone, when someone shoots someone because they're trying to take a wallet, it is not torture like they did We to should Floyd. explain that these bills, what they're trying to do is to say that, what, there'll be an extra penalty if it is a crime committed because of race, religion, or sexual orientation. Right, because yeah. the intent is because of, it's, it's for yeah. no other reason other than the boy was gay and they went out and tortured and killed him because he was gay. And right now there are hate uh, crime laws in 21 states. There are eight states who, that do not have the law, but in these states sexual orientation is not included. And why anybody would just, you know, regardless, everyone can have their opinion, they cannot agree with who I happen to be, they can say, I think it's wrong, that's their right. But why anyone would say you do not deserve protection, why, why anyone would even waver and say we what don't need... What kind of protection it. can you give? 
Well, it deters at the very least. Mm -hmm. And see, in the whole thing, and it I sends mean, a message. One hopes. I hope, and the, the the authorities get involved, and people. I mean, I've seen so many horrible documentaries of, you know, policemen interviewing, you know, women who have been beaten or raped or whatever, and they don't care. They just they. Uh, they call them names. They, you know, they, they, they don't care. They feel like they deserve it. Tell us about what happened last night and, and who this was for and if you think it, that it will have any effect. I hope, I hope it's for every caring, compassionate person. I don't, I don't want to speak to people who are gay who are all feeling the same rage. And it isn't just about being gay. I, f I felt this same you know, not to the extent, but but with uh, with what happened to uh, the black man who was dragged behind a truck. That's right. Why yeah, why time. anybody just because he was black mm -hmm. would mm -hmm. do such a thing to a human being is is a horrible thing, and so it does exist. It still exists uh, against mm -hmm. blacks, against gays. Um, I, you know, I I want people to start caring. You know. When, when Hitler was killing all the Jews, it was a few good Germans who decided we, we can help them. We can hide them and we can help them live. We need non-gay people. We need heterosexuals to help us now because we are under attack. And it starts with telling your children not to call someone a faggot in school, which is now a common word because I've been speaking to high schools and it is all over the hallways and it's okay to call someone a faggot and then it leads to pushing and then it leads to gay bashing and then, and then it leads to killing. You know, I was saying the last time I was on the program, I remembered in South Pacific and I sounded 200 years old, but I remembered that there was a verse that went, you've got to be taught, be and this was about racial, you've got to be taught before it's too late. Remember this? Before you were sick, you probably don't remember. My, no, my mother before you were six or seven or eight to hate all the people your relatives hate. My mother always talks about that lyric in that song, yeah. Well, we want you to stay with us and come back and we want to talk about you as well. Okay. And, and what, what you're doing and what's happening. and. I'm awfully glad you came on with us. If Thank we can you. enlighten and just begin when they're young, maybe such a thing will be will be forgotten and in, in the past. I pray so. We'll be right back with my co-hosts who are going to ask questions on, on all of our minds. What has life been like after Ellen? Not this Ellen, the other Ellen, who was this Ellen? Stay with us. Why was I chosen to host? I, I, well, I think it's obvious. I, I started out in stand-up, and a host is uh, required to stand up uh, a lot. And I was the third caller, and I knew the phrase. When Ellen's sitcom got canceled, Ellen DeGeneres got going. Not only is her relationship with her partner, Anne Hayes, better than ever, but so is her career. And you'll soon see her in a new movie called Ed TV. And she's hosting this year's VH1 Fashion Awards. Please welcome back Ellen DeGeneres. Thank you. So, you know, I got to tease you about the VH1 Fashion Awards. And for those who don't know about it, it gathers together designers, models, musicians for this great, wonderful night. Right. So, Ellen, fashion maven, aren't you? <laughs> well, <laughs> when you think of fashion, <laughs> exhibit A. <laughs> the Olsen twins were busy, and so they. Uh, <laughs> called me. Um, I heard this horrible lie. Yeah. It's really that, that you were going to do something in your underwear. Girl, I was going to have to call you on the phone. <laughs> but you were going to do an ad or something in, an, uh, in yeah. your underwear, and it ended up being printed somewhere. Well, it was in Newsweek. There's like a picture of me with the Victoria's Secret Angels, and of course, they're in their underwear, because that's all they ever wear. And uh, <laughs> seriously, I went to dinner with them the other night. That's all they wear. <laughs> um, but, you know, and there was, it's in there saying that I threatened to take off my clothes because it was so hot and I had cashmere on. I was fully clothed and they were in their underwear. And they were, what, what was happening is they were complaining how hot it was. And I said, don't you dare.